Hello, hello. Today I'm going to be showing you how to set up XPatter. So once you have it downloaded, you're going to click on New here, and then you're going to click on Open. Now XPatter typically comes with a bunch of images for controllers. If yours are not there, then what you can do is you can go on their website and you can download them. It's all up to you, but I'm, I'm using Xbox 360 controller, so I'm going to select that one. And then all you're going to do now is you're going to go through each of the sections, and you're going to enable each different variant that you want to enable. You don't have to have all this enabled, but personally, I like having every button available. And then speaking of buttons, this is probably the most important part. Just make sure that you are correctly lining up the buttons with the ones that you are pressing. I have seen people accidentally mismap this, and it gets very confusing down the line when you're trying to learn games. But just make sure you got everything. Another thing you can do is you can press down on the sticks there, and those are extra buttons that you can use something I see people forget and then you're just going to get the triggers and that's pretty much it for this part now what we're gonna do is I'm going to map the standard deviation that we use for Odyssey Exodus is very similar Exodus only has a few different buttons compared to Odyssey so if you are playing on Odyssey then you can just set up your buttons however you would like it's completely up to you you don't even have to follow this standard format that I'm following but I like trying to keep everything the same, personally, because I like being able to let people see how most of the other people in the community run it. But we're just gonna keep, we're just gonna go through each set here. We're going to click and enable every single button that we have. But as I said again, you don't have to follow this deviation. You can do it however you want. But I personally like trying to stick to the same thing. Now you'll notice here I have a numpad on the side where I can assign these numbers. I would recommend against doing that simply because of the fact that Live Split generally takes control of your numpad whenever you open it up. So if I do assign numbers from the numpad onto my controller, I could accidentally split on Live Split, or I could press other buttons on there that could reset the splits or undo splits, things like that. It's typically not recommended to do that, but if you have changed your live split controls and you don't see any issues with that, then by all means, you can do that. So once we have all the buttons set, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go back to set one. We're gonna click on the left button here. We're gonna go to advanced. And what we're going to do is go to set selector, set to while held. And then we're also going to do the exact same thing for the left trigger. Go to Advanced, Set Selector. This one we're going to do Set 3 while held. So what this will do is now when I press this button, it'll switch to the second layout. And when I press this button, it'll go to the third layout. This will help with game speak in the games since both Odyssey and Exodus require you to do that. And then that is pretty much it. The only other thing that you could do is you could click this little cog, uh, wrench here and you could change the dead zone for your sticks, maybe you, if your stick is drifting a little bit. I personally like having mine around 50 or 60%, somewhere around there, because then your dead zone is pretty big. But that is only because my controller can drift sometimes. It is personally up to you. And then besides that, what you can do is you can just hit the little save here, and we can save this as test. And then we can also save the layout of the buttons as test. And that's pretty much it. Good luck with your speedruns, y'all.